Uh, thank you everybody for joining today's NFCore bite sized talk. Um, usually, these short talks are about specific topics like how to develop code within the NFCore framework or about a specific pipeline, things like that. Um, today is a little bit different because we're going to go over the results of the Nextflow and NFCore community survey. Um, those of you who are on Twitter and who are on the NFCore Slack, uh, will have seen me posting, <laughs> requesting everybody to, to take a few minutes to fill in this survey back at the start of the year around Jan January, February time. Um, and uh, basically it's, uh, it's something we're trying to do annually to really take a snapshot of all the different people using Nextflow, uh, who everyone is, um, why everyone is using Nextflow, what works, what doesn't work, to try and prioritize development um, and also really get a feel for for what needs the most attention, both in the community and in, in the software. Um, so apologies for, for that spam back, <laughs> back at the start of the year, if you, if you kind of had that in multiple channels, but um, many thanks to everybody who filled it in. Um, those of you who followed through on click that link will have ended up on the Secura Labs uh, webpage, uh, which looked like this, and you kind of went through and followed, followed the you know, multi-step survey. Um, one of the main reasons we want to do this survey is uh, because Nextflow and NFCore are co-funded by a Chan Zuckerberg initiative grant. Uh, this particular grant is called a Diversity and um, Inclusion Grant uh, through the Essential Open Source for Science program. Um, and the focus of this particular grant that we're on is about trying to, well, basically <laughs> what the grant cycle is, uh, improve the diversity and inclusion, both geographically and, and through every other metric. Um, and in order to actually track whether we're doing a good job, we need some kind of metrics. It's very difficult to track this, but one of the things that we want to use is, um, is this survey, basically. And so by doing it pretty early on within the scope of this two-year grant, we're hoping we can track improvement over the next two years, um, time will tell. So it's really important for us uh, within the context of community growth and funding. So let's dig in. <clears throat> Those of you um, who are active on Twitter may have noticed a, a Secure Labs tweet went out a couple of hours ago. There is a blog post on Secure Labs website all about this with the infographics. Um, so you can find all of this information, dig into it yourself if you haven't done already. I'm going to go through some of the key conclusions in this talk. Uh, and I'm also going to pull out a few additional statistics which didn't make it into the infographic uh, just so that you don't feel like I'm repeating myself completely. Let's start off with some community demographics. Firstly, as hopefully we already knew and, and hoped, we are a very global community, which I love. Um, mo the majority of the users are based in the US and in, in the UK and certainly in Europe. Uh, that's kind of fairly inevitable from our uh, origins of the community and also mirrors uh, the density of people working in, in the field in bioinformatics. Um, but there was, I think, 36 different countries um, in the respondents list which is fantastic. I'm sure that's up a lot since the last few years. Um, so that's it's really nice to see. We're, we're increasingly spreading around the world. Um, and let's see if we can push these numbers up uh, and make that map go even more blue for the next year. Um, the majority of people, we asked what your kind of favorite primary language for reading and writing was. Most of, uh, most of you picked English, um, which is not a surprise. Um, but there's quite a lot of people speaking other languages as well. Um, we have a pretty terrible uh, gender equality. I'm not sure it's just our fault. I think it's probably indicative of a, a wider issue, uh, but that's definitely something that could, of course, be improved if anyone has any ideas. Um, and yeah, there's a pretty wide range of, of people, uh, lots of early stage researchers using Nextflow uh, and lots of people kind of well into that career as well. So it's really nice to see these kinds of things and get a feel for who everyone is. <laughs> um, so I said there's lots of languages. You can see English is up there at the top, but there's a long, long tail. And a interestingly, a lot of people were kind of bundled into that other category there. Um, so again, as a nod to how diverse our community is already. Um, and this is really useful, for example, if we want to prioritize any efforts to translate material, we know which languages are most important to our community. Um, digging into a bit more of, of what it is that everybody does, uh, very similar to last year, the majority of people who filled in the survey are, are class themselves as bioinformaticians. 
Um, <clears throat> a few other people kind of with different categories. Job categories is always difficult. You can kind of look into the others category and people <laughs> kind of some kind of a identity crisis uh, issues going on there. <laughs> but most people are kind of bioinformaticians working with biological data. Um, lots of people within academia and research, um, but also a lot of people in, in biotech startups, especially that seems to be growing since last year um, and, and kind of pharma and, and clinical work. So that's, that's really interesting to see as kind of next flow matures and it gets more heavily adopted. It's branching out, out of academia a little bit into the, into the wider community. Um, lots of people who filled in the survey have only recently started using Nextflow, which is really interesting. Still under a year for the majority of people who filled in the survey. So welcome, all of you. <laughs> um, so even though some of the statistics came up similar to last year, we we're actually looking at a lot of people here uh, who are new. Um, uh, and. I think that's fantastic. It shows we're still, I haven't saturated the market by all, any means. There's still lots of people who don't know about Nextflow and lots of people joining the community all the time. Uh, generally, you're uh, a very happy bunch. <laughs> Everybody likes Nextflow, which is good. Maybe there's a bias in, in there, who fills in the survey here, but <laughs> um, generally everyone seems to say that they're very happy with, with Nextflow and with, with the community. So um, vast majority of you would recommend, and, and I believe do recommend the Nextflow to your colleagues. Um, and that's actually slightly better than last year. So even, even slightly better satisfaction rate, which is, which is never a bad thing. So always room to improve at the top. Um, something that didn't make it into a blog post, but I think is one of the more interesting parts of the survey, is those of you who felt frustrated with Nextflow. <laughs> it's not a complete kind of paradox here. I think it's fine to be, say you're satisfied with Nextflow, but you are occasionally feeling frustrated with it. That's natural with any programming language. Uh, and so if you've ever felt like this, you're not alone. <laughs> Most of us have at times felt, felt frustrated with Nextflow. If I dug, dug into that a little bit and started reading, you know, it was 300 and something, uh, free text responses here about why all of you have found felt frustrated. The, the common themes that jumped out to me were um, familiar to many of you, I'm sure, the fact that Nextflow works with Groovy, which is not one of the mainstream languages for bioinformatics people. Um, a lot of people say they often struggle to interpret what the error messages mean. It's people saying it can be quite difficult to get into Nextflow and, and NFCore that has a steep learning curve. And, and a few people saying that things, <laughs> the community is so active, things are moving so fast, it was difficult to stay up, up to date, which uh, is kind of a double-edged sword there. There's lots of activity, which is great, but it, it can be difficult to keep up. So um, just for those of you who filled in this question, know that uh, we hear you. Uh, these are all things we're, we're aware of within Nextflow and NFCore um, and, and things that we're always trying to improve on. I went a bit further. <laughs> Just because I could, uh, and threw together a quick, uh, quick word cloud here for all the things that annoy you, uh, just just as a kind of I don't know form of venting, I guess. But uh, yeah, remember, it can't be all that bad because you're all really happy. So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> so a couple more questions here. Uh, people asking how, why, why you're running next play, um, and the first two categories: people running and writing their own workflows, basically right, doing analysis for themselves. The next two categories of people running and building workflows for other people, so kind of bioinformatics core groups and, and things like that, uh, and, and a handful of you building larger systems that include Nextflow. Um, and when it comes to the workflows you're using, lots of people building their own workflows, which is, of course, are expected, but a fantastic number of you using NF core workflows. Now, again, in fairness, there's probably some bias here. We've pushed out this survey through NF core channels amongst others. So I would sort of hope that at least some of you were using NF core pipelines, <laughs> but still it's a fantastic to see uh, so many people responding that they are using NF core workflows on a, on a regular basis. And this is really valuable resource. <clears throat> but um, you're also quite promiscuous. You know, it's not just Nextflow. Uh, over half of users are using more than one workflow tool, which I thought was, I was quite surprised by this result. Lots of you using SnakeMake and Nextflow, Galaxy, CWL, um, whatever you need to, to kind of get the job done. So just because you're very happy with Nextflow doesn't mean you're blind to all the alternatives. And that, that's no bad thing. It's good to have some competition and cross-fertilization of ideas. Um, when it comes to where you're running kind of the compute environments that everyone, everyone uses, uh, the majority, just like last year, is still running on kind of um, HPCs, on-premises um, clusters. 
uh, and also single computers. And that's not something we expect to change massively in the near future. Um, but there is an uptick in the number of people using cloud. Um, if you compare to last year, the categories are pretty much the same, but basically there's a bit of a bit of an increase in the people uh, who, are, who are using private clouds, especially. Is that right? Or have I got the other way around? Anyway, decrease in the number of people using HPCs. Um, for those of you who are running with um, HPCs, the majority use Slurm. Um, that's definitely the most common scheduler, followed by Grid Engine. And that's again similar to last year. So, uh, and we see that in the community on Slack, people posting questions, lots of people using Slurm. Um, quite a lot of people using public cloud today, and quite a lot of people uh, planning to move towards the cloud. Lots of people are looking in that direction. And uh, when we compare the different types of cloud to different public clouds available, uh, AWS, Amazon is, is by far the most popular. Um, but Azure has a kind of a climbing, climbing rank there. And again, if you break this down by where people are answering from, lots of people in academia working with clusters and um, public cloud is, is super popular within the private sector, which maybe is not that surprising, but um, yeah, up to 77% of people within public within private sets using, using cloud now. Um, last year, we asked about Kubernetes, uh, a bit of a hot topic for those of you who know about it. Um, lots of people, a, a small number of people, I think it was about 8% last year, who were already using Kubernetes. Uh, lots of people saying you were, you were planning to use Kubernetes in the future. Um, so we were one, curious to see if, if anything had changed in the year. Uh, it hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's pretty much exactly the same number of people saying that they are actively using Kubernetes today across the various different Kubernetes uh, solutions. Uh, but again, lots of people saying that they're interested in it. Um, so moving forward, we'll see, uh, see if anything changes there in the future. We asked a bit about the kind of different traits, the reasons that you use in Nextflow and what, what things do you find important um, when, when you're kind of choosing which tool to use. Um, and the winner of this category was definitely documentation. Um, I'm totally with you on this one. I've got a soft spot for trying to put together documentation for tools. Um, and yeah, so documentation and, and performance are the two real kind of outstanding categories here. Um, and when we asked you, okay, within documentation and, and kind of learning materials, what's, what do you use the most or what's most useful? Um, the official documentation and reference documentation came top and NF Core came, came a close second. Um, so that's great to see. Everyone is using the documentation that, that we've, we've been building. Um, and this is definitely a hot topic for us right now. We're really, I think we've got lots of room for improvement with documentation. So uh, it's kind of, it's good to see. Um, this uh, survey went out just before the next flow Slack um, went live. Um, so everyone was still using the Nextflow Gitter at that point, but just um, we asked about the, <coughs> the NF Core Slack, and, and the vast majority of people who responded knew about and used the, the NF Core Slack, which is great. So not only is the NF Core community kind of building pipelines and standards, but it's also a big support channel, um, and lots of people are also feeding back into the community. Nearly thirty percent of people are, are contributing back to these NF Core community pipelines. So it's really good to see. So two-way street there. Um, and apparently no one really wants a graphical interface for their, their workflow manager, it's fair enough. <laughs> but you can see documentation really stands out as being very important for lots of people. Um, yes, and then also we're kind of thinking about uh, integrations, and, and this is more kind of tooling. Again, it's quite detailed here. Um, but a lot of you want to be able to optimize computational resources, which makes sense. Unit tests was, was a popular category here. Um, so this is great. This is kind of real fodder here for feeding into the, the next flow development process. Um, and, and of course, to really prioritize which, which topics need to be tackled. Right, um, I'm gonna wrap up there. Uh, you can go and look into this in more detail yourself and make your own conclusions uh, on the Secure website. Um, we've got the blog post which went live this morning, uh, so you can click through to that. Um, if you have any questions, maybe I'll just quickly check the questions now. 
before we go on. No, okay. Um, in that case, I will hand over at this point to Evan, um, CEO of, of Secura. Um, and Evan is going to share with us a live draw for the present prizes. Um, because there was definitely an ulterior motive for some of you to fill in this survey. <laughs> and with that, I'll stop, I'll stop sharing and I'll pass over to Evan. Okay, thanks a lot, Phil. This should be pretty short here, um, which we can go through. But what we have is, is part of the survey we had, so around uh, 10 people, uh, 10 uh, prizes, which were set up for uh, for Nextflow and Secure Labs merchandise packs. Um, so as part of that, we took all of the names um, and we placed them into this big uh, sort of circular uh, prize drawer here. Um, and from there, we, draw, we drew 10 people. We just did this earlier on this morning, mostly because it takes some time, but if you want to watch it, you can kind of go through the whole thing. So the winners of the, of the merchandise packs that we had as part of that, we've got uh, Jacob, um, Stefano, uh, Susanna, Anka, Lizzy, Yoke, Nicholas, Adam, uh, Avinash, and Angela. So we'll reach out to all of you, send you out a link where you can get this. They've got a hoodie in there. Uh, we've got t-shirts. Um, hats uh, and some and some cool Nextflow socks as well. So uh, thanks to everyone for for doing that. The the next part of it um, is around the the prize for the uh, for the Mac. Uh, so as part of that, we're going to do that live, and I'm going to share my screen here, and hopefully be able to do this. So again, this is the similar thing where everyone's names being entered into this, um, and we will draw the winner. Um, be able to do that. It's hopefully I can um, share par partial my screen here um, to do that. Okay, it wasn't too far off. So this will take about 10 seconds or so to run through um, and we will have the winner. So let's start that off now. So let's spin around. And the winner of the Mac M1 for the prize is Michael H from USA. So congratulations, Michael. We'll reach out to you um, and and uh, send you through an email uh, with the information and uh, and go from there. That's it. I think thanks so much to Phil for for bringing that presentation together. As I say, if you want to go reach out um, and have a look at the blog, um, we're going to try and do these more sort of regularly. This is the sort of second year of this, and a lot of this information becomes um, sort of more useful the um, the more as it's worth. I'm not sure if for some reason my my video is off, but here here I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm a real person. So thanks everyone for for joining. Um, say read the blog, reach out to us if you've got any questions. Always appreciate everyone's work, and uh, yeah, thanks so much. Uh, thank you very much. Um, are there any questions for Phil or or Evan <laughs> from the audience? Um, I don't think so. Um, then I would like to thank both of you and uh, also the Chan Zuckerberg Foundation for funding, of course. And I'm going to stop the recording now, um, but be aware that you can always ask more about um, today's topic in the bite sized channel on Slack. And um, yeah, contact us if you have any other questions. <laughs>